Remember a pint of best. Courage do. Oh, YouTube, FT here. Just caught me doing some of my uh, hobby work. But before we go into that, let's do the hotaki bing. I'm smoking the remains of a Henry Winterman's Founders Blend cigar. Not a bad smoke, actually. And I've got a collection of my hobby stuff around me because I've been working on it and I thought I'd make a video to show you what I'm doing. So let's start off with what you all know and see, which are the clocks. This is uh, a standard tobacco tin clock. This one is going out to somebody already. This one's assigned to somebody. What I've been doing is, if the tin is coming without a warning label, embedded in the main label then I'm peeling off the warning label and the tin remains thus. If the warning label is part of the main label then I'm printing some replacement labels, sticking them over and this type of thing happens. The thing is I can put anything you want. If you want to do a trade with me for one of these clocks I can put any wording you want within reason you know, because of the space onto one of the replacement stickers. Not only that, I can actually do a completely new label for you. So if, if you don't want a tobacco label, you might want something else. I can knock something up and print it out and replace the tobacco label with it. So they're just the standard round tins. This one's a little bit deeper. What I will say with the round tins is you can actually take the base off them and as long as you let me know beforehand, I can make it so they can be hung as well on a hook. So they're the round tins. Obviously, if you've got a favourite tin and you want to send it to me to make it into a clock, that's not a problem. I'm making some Silum tin clocks, thanks to Terry Love UK. He sent me some different coloured Silum tins, so I'm going to be making some of those clocks. I've got some W.O. Larson's tins. This is a good example of a tin where the warning on the front is actually part of the printing process of the tin. So I can't remove that. But what I can do is put your own wording or, or, or have a good smoke or whatever here and stick over it. The warning on the back was part of the stuck on label so I've just cut it off and removed it. So that's a, a good example. Cigar clocks. I am making cigar box clocks. Here's one I'm in the process. I've already made one of these and that was uh, gifted to my brother. This is another one I'm making. Just started on this one. Flat type. This is the Ashton clock you may have already seen. This is a freestanding one, but I can put a mount on the back so they mount on walls. I've got one I'll show you in a minute, already on a wall. And they do open up with a little bit of space. You can put your notes and things in there. Here's the very flat cigar boxes. They make very good wall clocks. And to mount these, it's really simple. I'm actually just putting a hole in the back. You could put a mounted bracket. I've just got a hole in the back and a hook on the wall. And it just These are quite it. good to use. You can get slightly thicker ones. Mount them on the wall. You've got your clock. Open it up. 
apart from where the clock mechanism resides, so you'd have to mark that off here, you could put little hooks in these and hang your keys from that. And in fact, one of the things I will be experimenting with is to make a cigar box key hanger without the clock part, it's just a cigar box. I'm experimenting on making my own cigar box. Uh, it's basically a pine box. This box was actually designed to be like this. But I turned it up on its end, putting some feet on it, drilling the holes out, putting corner caps on. At the moment what I'm doing with this one is populating it with cigar bands. And these are cigars I'm actually smoking. So it's going to take, it's taking a bit of time, but eventually this whole side, the top and this side will be covered with them. Then I'll put the clock mechanism in. The beauty about these ones is that they come with a little shelf. Uh, cigar boxes, staying with cigar boxes. Hemingway box. At the moment I've got it as a box, so I've got little felt feet I've added to the bottom. And when you open this one up, inside it I have one of my favourite pipes. It was actually gifted to me uh, at Christmas by my wife. And it's in, in this case gold foam and you can take it out and you can have a smoke and then clean it up and when you're finished put it back. Now the other idea I'm toying with is removing the lids altogether and having a mount so you can actually wall hang that uh, as a picture, as a piece of art. And when you fancy a smoke you just walk up to your art picture, take out the pipe and smoke it. This is one I'm particularly proud of. It's quite uh, a nice cigar box as it is size wise. This type of cigar box would be ideal for the key hanger. But this one I've turned into my corn cob holder. These are, shall we say, my special corn cobs for different reasons. As you can see, I can different coloured foam. But they're well protected, very safe. I'm actually thinking of making a travel case, a pipe travel box. The trouble is, uh, if any of you are interested in this type of thing, I need the pipe. The pipe's quite important because I use it to mark the cuttings on the foam. And without the pipe I can't really make one of these for you. That's if you're interested. So let's move on a bit. The other things i have doing is the old classic record clock. Now this one happens to be a 45. I can do LPs as well. However, I do not wish to use my 45s or my LPs. If you have a favourite record and you would like to send it to me then I'm more than willing to turn it into a clock for you and we can do a trade. That's an example of uh, a 45 clock. And then finally, what I'm experimenting with are malt whiskey tins. Here's an example of a malt whiskey tin. Uh, I'm still working on hand sizes and things for these, but they're brilliant. They make brilliant clocks. Um, they're so well designed and decorated. And what I intend to do as an example on this particular one, the famous grouse, is if I can put the whole between the 1800 and the word the, then nothing gets ruined and you have small hands that would swing As around. an example of that, here's one, this is a Glen Morangi. They're lovely tins, full of information and pictures. This one I felt the picture warranted having the clock mechanism in the middle. I've already made the hole. I've experimented this with big hands and it doesn't look right. So I'll be getting some small hands that operate within this area. Here's the example of the Glen Morangi using short hands and the picture as the clock face. So this one's finished.
And I've also got the uh, the famous grouse. These two are already accounted for. I have one more of these that I'm making. So if you're interested and want to trade, just PM me. So let's just share with you some of the things that I'm playing with at the moment. Now none of that stuff is for sale. That's not why I do it. But if you live in the UK and you are interested in any of it, PM me and I'm sure we can work something out but they're not for sale. Might be a swap or a trade or something like that, I'm more than happy to do that sort of thing. So thanks for watching, it's Friday, have a good weekend, keep them alight, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.